All right, everybody. It's serious time. Let's get serious. It's time to discuss something. Okay? It's time for us to discuss something. Okay? And this is going to get a little heavy. Okay? But it's serious time. Okay? All right, everybody. Yeah, we got to talk about Christine Chandler. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, there's tons, Zordon. You're not alone at all. Yeah, oh, that'd be great, Pickle and Croissant. Gladly. Just let me know. We'll make it happen. Okay. We're not going to go deep down the rabbit hole, but I am going to tell you the story of uh, Christine Weston Chandler. <sighs> okay. So... For those of you who do not know, there is a very, very famous internet figure known as Chris Chan, Christian Weston Chandler, or CWC. Some of you might know about this person because of Sonichu. Sonichu being a character that was drawn right here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just show a picture. Actually, let's see. Can I find the uh um, an updated one here we go this is the original one okay this is the original art um this is the original art that uh that kind of was became infamous okay go sonichu go out and zap to the extreme now you might go well why does why does a drawing of sonic mixed with pikachu um <clears throat> Like, why does that have any sort of relevance on the internet? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. Still often referred to by the name they were referred to before, which was Chris Chan, now Christine Chan. Um, Christine is sort of the original lol cow. And if you're not familiar with the term lol cow, a lol cow is basically somebody who posts on the internet all the time and can be easily provoked into um, doing funny or embarrassing things um, then that they can then be laughed at. Certain websites exist specifically to farm lol cows. You might know of one of these called um, Kiwi Farms. Oh, me too. Me too. I, many people are lol, lol cows. Lots of people call them are, end up being lol cows. It has, the, the, the term has basically no meaning anymore. Um, it's just an insult. Um, there are lots of them, okay? Um, and Christine, uh, has been in the, I, the sort of, uh, crosshairs of the internet for a very, very, very long time. Yes, it is, Pros Renegade. It, like, loaded. That's all the people that use it. Um, the name Kiwi Farms, in fact, originated from Chris Chan. From Christine Chan? Okay, yeah, that I didn't know that specific piece, but yes. Um so um there are there is literally um uh there is is literally so much there is so much shit about uh about Chris Christine Chan out there that it's hard to even begin. Um, so Christine has been uh, the target of an unbelievable amount of harassment and bullying. Um, Christine was doxxed very early on. So people found out where Christine lives. They sent stuff to her. They heckled her on the internet. They would post her videos, her videos that, that, that she did talking about various subjects. Sometimes, some, many of them were very cringy, like, um, very cringy. Like I'm talking, there's a video out there of, uh, of CWC, um, teaching people how to do like cunnilingus. Um, and, and there's actually like actual documentaries that have been made about this. There's a lot of like cringy stuff. But that's it, okay? It's cringe, okay? And there was no harm being 
done by Chris Chan than anybody could, like, of any substantial note that justified in any way, shape, or form the amount of hyper-focus that certain corners of the internet had um, on Christine. And um, as time went on, Christine was more and more open about the disgusting harassment um, and horrific nonsense that had been put upon, uh, put upon her. And in addition, like her family got involved. There's videos with uh, her dad like shouting at the screen. There's videos of 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 family members involved. It is and and no, but none of them know how to use the internet safely. None of them. <clears throat> and like I think it goes without like I, I don't want to say it goes without saying, but Christine is very autistic, and. Uh, that has led to, um, an incredible amount of just raw hate and bullying. The term A-log also comes from one of her obsessed harassers who became a lolcow himself after making a 500-part documentary. That's absolutely absurd. And keep in mind that, like, the popularity of, like, anti-autistic jokes kind of... I, w I don't say that it started, but it was it was a huge part influenced by the hate that was thrown at um at uh, Christine Chandler. And today, uh, oh, and of course there was the um infamous incident in which uh Christine Chandler was out in a uh they went to a GameStop or I can't remember the exact story. I think it was a GameStop or an EB Games or something along that line. And they got in an altercation with the staff there that was being filmed by people and, of course, immediately got leapt on and turned into a mega meme. So the, the reality is that Chris, Christine Chandler has lived her, her life for years under an absolutely unbearable amount of scrutiny, stalking, hate, harassment hate mail, people going to her house, and all of this. Doe Reformed says, I hate that I think there's some really funny lines from some of the awful stuff she's gone through, like her uploading something and her parents saying, you upload it, now you unload it. Yes, that's, I mean, it's very, very funny. And it does come from abuse. And like, I think there's a certain level of like, recognizing funny moments that can be funny without necessarily, um, the, the, the I mean, the the you uploaded it now unloaded is something that like has entered the lexicon in a bigger um sense so i think there are funny things that can be laughed at without necessarily um participating in the nonsense i think that video is funny but i don't participate or propagate any of the the anti -Christ christine chandler stuff um and yes of course uh Christine, the, the incident in which we're talking about, like I said, was very cringy. There was pepper spray involved. Christine was very angry about the Sonic Boom redesign of Sonic, and it resulted in an altercation. Sonic Boom actually included a joke vaguely referencing Christine Chandler and the arm colors. Um, It was, yeah. This is, yeah, one of, no, this is one of the people that, that uh, ContraPoints talks about in the cringe videos. Um, yes, VP Trashman says, uh, CWC has basically been living a toxic version of the Truman Show for the past 15 years. That is so accurate. I, I really, really appreciate that you said that because that is true. Uh, CWC has been living the, a, a horrifically scrutinized life. Well, yes, of course Truman Show was super toxic. Well, yes, but, but I mean... Okay, y you, yes. But you know what I mean. It was already toxic, obviously. But this, we're talking like 10 times worse. It's, it, I think it's even worse. Yeah. Like, they couldn't, yeah, the, the audience couldn't directly harass Truman. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, though. You got it. So, like, I don't really 
want to, uh, we're not going we're we're not going to go watch all of the 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 Chris Chan things that happened over the years. I I genuinely cr- cr- sorry, Christine Chan things. I I'm trying to adjust it. I know that sometimes there are some people say that Christine still goes by Chris Chan sometimes. CWC is probably the way to go. I apologize. Um but what I'm trying to say here is that I'm not here to kick at CWC. There is no real reason for us to watch CWC's infinitely, unfathomably long history of cringe um, and controversial things on the internet. However, we do need to talk about something that happened today, okay? Some of you might know, in fact, I think if I go on Twitter right now, yep, indeed, if I go on Twitter right now, I'm going to show it to you, right now, live on Twitter, Chris Chan did what? Hashtag has been trending all day. All day. <sighs> yes. And we need to, we're good. And this is the point where I need to add a content warning. Okay. I need to add a content warning. And I think that most of the ways that people are talking about this is going to be very, very bad and very, very harmful. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. It appears there is some evidence that uh, CWC, that Christine Chandler, may have been, up until very, very recently, uh, sexually abusing her own mother. And, of course, the, uh, the police have been involved. Um, there are, uh, institutions involved. There are all kinds of, of, of people watching this now. It's trending on Twitter. And like we said, the toxic Truman show is, uh, is in full swing. And I just want to point out something. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll repeat it again. Yes. There is, uh, significant evidence yeah, the the they've already arrested her. Yeah, exactly. The mom's in the hospital. Um uh Christine's mother uh I believe her mother's name is Barbara. Um Barbara is uh a very old, very very disabled woman. And it appears that Christine has been raping this old woman. And that is incredibly, unbelievably fucked up. And before we talk about anything else, I want to point something out, okay? Which is that, um... Which is that is a lot of people who are going to justify the entire history of harassment against Christine Chandler because of this event. And that is not what we are going to do here. At all. Ever. Because this is a heinous, disgusting act that is victimizing a person who is supremely incapable of fighting back. And there are a, I already know because I've already looked at this stuff. I've already looked at some of the con- the uh, the conversations that are happening online, and there are a lot of people going down and looking to justify the past harassment, and that is not what we're here for. But it is a part of uh, this conversation. How do we even know if that really happened? Yes, we're going to talk about it, okay? So, Worry Slayer brings up a good point. Confessions of this sort have been blackmailed and tormented out of Christine before. Trolls constantly made Christine admit to being gay for decades. That said, if this is true and not a blackmailed falsehood, I think I'm done with the internet permanently. I'm very sorry to hear that you're done with the internet, but I completely understand that. 
But I want to I want people to understand a couple of things. First of all, it's not confirmed. However, there have been leaked messages that appear to be uh credible and as far as we can tell right now, the police have already moved on it and they have already been separated. Okay? So the the family has been separated. It's so bad that the tag on Twitter is a horrible mess. It is a horrific nightmare mess, and I do not recommend looking into it. And I, I, I will not be showing anything on here, um, about the uh, about the tag because uh, it's really just, it's really just harassment, more harassment. So there's a couple of things we can look at here, and a couple of things we need to talk about. Yeah, it's messy in every single direction. Um but there's a lot of there's a lot of problems going on here, which is it is true it is true that CWC has confessed to things that didn't happen in the past after threats. I mean, there are examples in the past where people threatened uh CWC's family um with violence and so in order to try and save her family, CWC has confessed to things that weren't true. So she wasn't arrested. There was just a restraining order. See, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be changing, etc. So who broke the story? Well, that's con that's complicated, okay? That's really complicated. However, I have found the uh the the notes or the the leaked messages that appear to be where this is coming from and again we don't really have to worry all that much about what actually happened because what actually happened in this particular circumstance is all is going to be figured out by the police etc okay So we don't really need to worry about that part of it. What I want to talk about is the reaction and the fallout and, and the ways that people are going to talk about this. Now, it is very possible that this actually happens, that this actually happened, that all of the details are there. Um, that, that uh, you know, that it checks out and it's true that this happened. And that's very, very tragic. Um... I won't be I won't be showing anything on Twitter. It is the the tag is a just horrible mess. Like I mean I'm looking right here and it was immediate that I just see people calling uh talking about degeneracy, depravity, all of this nonsense. And it is likely um that a lot of transphobia and that a lot of homophobia and that a lot of um uh ableism is going to be uh seen online around this and i want you to recognize that those arguments are full of shit just so you know anybody who would point to cwc and go autistic that's why trans trans that's why uh and 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 ignore the entire past are full of shit their argument doesn't hold water it's meaningless it's literally a nonsensical argument that just attempts to paint all of a group of people as bad because of one bad actor. But I want you to recognize how many people are immediately going to jump to ableism, transphobia, instead of actually looking at the history of what happened. And what we actually have on our hands is somebody who has been exposed to the internet in perhaps the most, uh, like, the most unrestricted and unfiltered way imaginable. Somebody who was seemingly incapable of understanding internet security, of understanding social dynamics online, who was enabled by the, by random circumstances of their life. It's so bad. And people ignore that. It's, it's a, a, it is a 
obvious example of everything that can go wrong with the internet and how our society fails to actually help people who need it. Because keep in mind that there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who know about CWC, who've known about CWC for years, who've known that it's very obvious that CWC is struggling and is suffering under the circumstances of her life. And yet, no one could help. A lot of people could harm, though, but it seems like nobody could help. Yes, that is true. Uh, Doe Do brings up, not to disagree with your point, but I hope everyone here knows, literally no one is good at being safe online. No one is good at cybersecurity or OPSEC. Some people are just more susceptible to harms. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think there are there are ways of... of I, I No one is truly secure online. What what my point is that is that um some people are a little better at avoiding becoming the target and some people are a little better at weathering the storm when they become a target. But the reality is that that is not the case with CWC whatsoever. And um instead what we see is someone who became a totally against their will the beacon for every, all of the most hateful, um, voyeuristic and malicious groups of people on the internet. And just so we know, like, CWC has become a weapon against trans people and a weapon against autistic people and a, 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 a weapon against disabled people. And keep in mind that that isn't CWC's fault. That is wrong. It will always be wrong. Even if CWC, again, like I said, even if we find out that everything alleged here is true, that CWC did indeed rape her mother, it will still be true that CWC was mistreated and used as a weapon against other people. And that's very fucked. And I want people to recognize that you don't have to engage in cruelty. A lot of people, um, uh, uh, um, a lot of people, um, will feel the urge to engage in what we call defensive othering, okay? Defensive othering is when somebody that belongs to your in-group, whether it's autistic people or trans people, somebody who shares that identity, um, there is a, so a sociological phenomenon whereby many people will uh, basically attack that person to make it appear as though they're not really a true representative of the group. And the reality is that no single person is a representative of a group. That is ridiculous. But a lot of people fall into this defensive othering because they're scared of being associated with somebody who did things bad. Yes, it is the Blair White true scum tactic. Exactly, though. You saw this with Jessica Yaniv, and it's still being done right now. I clicked on a link in Twitter earlier today and right in the comments were Blair White and Stone Toss. Absolutely. You know Blair White's going to do this right away. You know Blair White's going to jump on this shit right away. And I would urge my viewers, my listeners, to resist this to the greatest degree possible. It is very, it is actually very easy to say, hey, yeah, this is disgusting and horrible act. But that doesn't excuse the horrific past that led up to this. In fact, we don't even know if that horrific past, well, we know for a fact that that horrific past contributed in some way, right? I don't think there's any way that you can argue that somebody can be subjected to uh, over a decade of concentrated internet hate that breaches into the real world without saying, hey, this probably led them to where they are, or at least contributed to leading them to where they are today. So 
the main reason why I wanted to talk about this CWC stuff today is because I want to point out that internet abuse is a fucking huge problem and that the right is going to try and use this to trick people into doing the defensive othering thing. The thing where they go, oh, yeah, uh, CWC isn't a real trans woman. CWC isn't a real autistic person. Well, no. CWC is trans and CWC is autistic. And guess what? Anybody can do bad things. But that doesn't reflect on the entire group. That doesn't reflect on the identity group. And it doesn't mean that you have to attack somebody. You know, in order to denounce their actions. The mere fact I need to say this says it all. Well, yeah, but that's the truth of our society. We live in a society that's incredibly pre prejudiced. And thank you, Sappho Trap House, for proving my point almost immediately. Are you, um... God, sometimes I get comments in my chat that make me, uh... Like, they just take my mood and they just go into the trash. That was one of them. That, that was one of them. Sometimes... How do I put this? Humans are creatures of change. We change throughout our lives and the events that we engage in change us, okay? All the time. And I have no doubt that the the current state of CWC um is uh is in has been strongly strongly influenced by the disgusting torture and I will call it torture because I do believe that it's torture. I believe that CWC has been subjected to torture. And guess what? Torture can really fuck you up. That doesn't mean that what happened is the fault of anybody. It's just the fact that we need to point this out. That this doesn't do anything. It's not just that, that led to a choice of rape. It leads to a... If, if your life becomes a living hell, you might not even think, you might not even find yourself capable of thinking straight anymore. You might not know, you might actually, like, like, severe extended trauma can seriously damage your ability to think about things. Not always, it doesn't always, but it can. Of course, CWC, CWC is still responsible for what was done. I mean... I have a feeling that there's probably, I mean, and the, the thing is, I just want you to recognize, like, let's zoom out for a second, everybody. Let's zoom out for one second, okay? And I want you to look at the life of CWC. Someone who, at a very young age, got onto the internet, became, entered into a perpetual cycle of surveillance and torture, and now is going to most likely be institutionalized for the rest of her life or put into prison. Your boy Tapoy says, yes, a mental state could make the choice of something a misnomer. Striped Kidder says, I've lived my whole life as a person of color fighting against this type of thing where a person of my race or ethnicity will do something bad and I see a mix of opinions in the same group that are similar to what I see now with CWC. She doesn't represent us. We do not recognize her as one of our own. She's one of the bad ones, and we aren't like her. It's a mess. There's so much going on with CWC to make this cut and dry. Is CWC bad, so trans people bad? But some people will try. And what I'm trying to tell you to do, because I think we can all acknowledge that's wrong, but what I'm trying to tell you to do is that be bold enough to reject that. You can say, don't fucking walk around over here and justify the abuse based on something that just happened now. Don't justify that shit. We can push back against that because we have to push back against it. It is an atrocity that there is anybody in our society who is sub subjected to the level of, 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 of disgusting surveillance and torture that CWC was. And CWC will be. Because let's be real. If this does turn out to be true, CWC will probably not go free. CWC will probably be tortured for the rest of her life. And I don't know about you, but I don't see that as a um, a, a, as a, a as a satisfying conclusion to any of this. 
4chan Fox says, I wouldn't be surprised if she still got stalked in the mental ward. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, the, if, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Not even a little bit. Doe says, if it turns out to be fake, she'll be tortured as well. The reality of it doesn't actually change anything. Yes, because what you, what we have witnessed with the story of CWC up to this point is a, is a snapshot of unfettered cruelty enabled entirely by the internet and a society that is incapable of, of helping people who need help. Because remember, again, no, it's not like CWC was invisible. There are a lot of people who could have, who could have helped somewhere along the way. You could even argue that the state might have been able to help somewhere along the way. And I don't even generally agree with state intervention because it usually just ends up with people getting institutionalized. But, but we don't have the structures. We don't have the societal, uh, we don't have the societal structures to, to help. Your boy Tapoy says she's had an actively updated page on Kiwi Farms for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Kiwi Farms has actually gotten footage of lol cows in psychiatric hospitals. I do not doubt that this will be the end. This isn't going to be the end. This isn't the end. But it is a definitive change in the way that things are going. I mean, I agree with you, Kyle Marshku. Well, it's worse than that, Mix Dizzy. Mix Dizzy says, the internet right now is like an owner who beat their dog from puppyhood and then justifies all these beatings because the dog finally bites them. No, it justifies the beatings because the dog bit one of the other dogs. Keep in mind that CWC's family has been subjected to all of the same stuff. This is not just CWC who's been subjected. CWC has been the anchor point, but CWC's family has been stalked. And it's uh, very, it, it, it's, it, it makes me sad. It makes me sad. It makes me sad for everyone involved. It makes me sad for the potential victim. Oh my god, that's sad too. Ro Robotic Reborn. CWC lives in my state and attended a local gaming convention called MAGFest two years ago. There was a CWC hate panel that was scheduled, and unbeknownst to the panelists, CWC was in the audience. The hate for her is weirdly inescapable, not even at gaming festivals. I have no idea how they let a panel like that even get approved. Do you see what I'm talking about? Can you imagine how... I, like... I just... I just, fuck. And as Maximilian Musk says in chat, um, Christine is messed up, but she's also a victim. Well, yeah. As it turns out, we are products in many ways of our circumstances. And if your circumstances have you uh, chancing into being harassed on the internet for a long time, it might completely fuck up your life. And I just, I don't know, sometimes I think about it and I go, oh my fucking God. Like, we've failed. We've failed as as beings we have failed to even we failed to even build basic interventions that can help people and and isn't it wild 
that at the end of all of this, at the end of a life of, uh, not even the end, but at this point in a light after, after decades of torture, um, the, the answer that we have is to lock someone up and to be further abused. Even if that person is an abuser themselves, what good does it do that we lock them in a place that will inevitably abuse them, that will make them easier to hurt more? But, but again, to, to wrap this all up, um, to wrap this all up, okay, I really, really, really want people to understand that you do not have to engage with stuff that Blair White is going to trot out. You don't have to do that. We can get better at it. We can learn to respond to these things better, and you do not have to participate. And you can also do what I'm doing right now, which is to say that it is a tragedy, that it is a crime against humanity, that the only answer that we have for helping people like Christine Chandler is to wait until their life gets to a point where somebody does get hurt and then somebody gets hurt even more and then that person gets put in a prison or an institution. America literally doesn't know how to solve problems without prisons. And that makes me feel like there is a societal misunderstanding of the purpose of any of this. But the thing is, we lock our problems away, but we lock... I mean, this is going to transition very well into the next topic I'm going to talk about. Um, because we're going to have two, actually, we're going to have three serious topics in a row, and then we're going to do memes afterwards. Queen Laura, in response to these events, should I do a video essay about the cycle of abuse from a neuroatypical perspective? I think that sounds like a great idea. A lot of this is due to nimbyism. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. But it's a mentality. It is a mentality that pervades our society, that we essentially, uh, push people into the margins until they become a big enough problem and then we push them into a cage where they die or suffer. Mental health is treated like a crime. The police in many places are the ones who respond to mental health crisis and they do so with their guns drawn. And it's, it is a very um, cold ineffective, expensive process. And what's worse is that it's not just expensive with regard to money. In my opinion, it is expensive to the human soul. And I don't really believe in, in, in like a literal metaphysical soul, but we pay a price for living like this. We pay a fucking price for building a society in which the answer to most of our problems is jail. It builds a society of paranoid, angry, hateful, terrified people. And it influences every aspect of our life. The human cost is unfathomable. Robotic Reborn says, The police are absolutely not equipped to respond to mental health emergencies at all. They're literally trained to see neurodivergent and disabled and mentally ill behavior as signs of violence or dishonesty. Yes. Um... NIMBY equals not in my backyard. What it is, is it's an idea, it's a, it's a sort of popular, uh, uh, political position that basically says, well, we should build homeless shelters, uh, over by the railroad track instead of near other humans. Even if that means that the, the, the homeless people have to walk all the way across town every single day to be able to get a warm meal. Um, it's, yeah, nimbyism is anti-homeless. It's stuff like that. It's saying, no, don't put a mental health hospital here. Go put a mental health hospital in the abandoned, um, in the abandoned factory district because we don't want to see them. That's what nimbyism is. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate and it's painful. And, and also it reflects how we deal with a lot of other things. Because keep in mind, let's talk about another aspect of this, which is that it is a part of the CWC story. It is a, a part 
of the facts of this story that CWC's mother, who is the victim, who is one of the victims in this situation, arguably the primary, I mean, the primary victim in this particular situation, um, as far as we can tell, provided the facts are indeed, um, you know, verified, um, doesn't have the, uh, doesn't have the resources necessary to live a good life. It is very clear that their family has uh, had a lot of issues, that they've been struggling, that they've struggled with illness. CWC's mother uh, struggles with, if I remember correctly, Alzheimer's. And I have, I this is something I can touch on per, uh, personally. My, my great-grandmother, who was hugely influential in my life, who I loved dearly, um had dementia and my mom was kind of the hero of the situation in that my mom took very 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 hands-on care of of my grandma my mom would often care for my grandma directly um like give her her medicine make sure that she was okay make sure she could get to the bathroom stuff like that but eventually it did become too much. My mom had to work. We had bills we had to pay. There was no opportunity for us. There was no way for us to get care for um, my great grandma. And my great grandma ended up in a retirement home. The first retirement home that she ended up in almost killed her. I'm not kidding you. When we went to go visit my grandma, I was there when this happened. We went in and my grandma was so dehydrated she couldn't even get her mouth open. Her lips were stuck together. And my mom had to go and pester a nurse to go and make sure, why the hell doesn't she have water? Why isn't she hydrated? She needs an IV, like now. And my grandma, thankfully, was able to be, my mom took personal cost. My mom was not rich, but my mom spent money getting my grandma into a, a private, um, a, a private retirement home, like Alzheimer's home, um, that was much, much better. But our society doesn't provide anything like that. If you're poor, you don't get a choice. You might not even get anything. My mom's nursing home gave her an overdose of wet, of wet, warfarin that led to a sepsis infection and put her into a coma. I'm really sorry to hear that. It happens unbelievable. And also, we know what happened during COVID. We we know what happened during COVID. So, very bad. I'm very sorry to hear that. The thing is, um, the thing is. There are ways to do this, even in our current system. Um, the last place that I lived um, was a multi-generational home, okay? Um, and in that multi-generational home uh, was a 92-year-old man who had some health problems. And thankfully, he had a caretaker who was who lived nearby it was a neighborhood thing just so happened that there was a caretaker in um who lived in the neighborhood and the family that i lived that me and my partners lived with the, sh the house that we shared with them they would pay her to come by and spend time with him and as a result he lived a pretty good life but that was not covered by the state that could not be covered by the state because of the way that it was Because the state doesn't allow that. The state bars everything behind paperwork and institutions. And so we don't have answers for this stuff. We, we do. We have answers. But we don't put them in because, at the end of the day, ideology. Because we see young people, old people, disabled people, people who are just slightly different, as dispensable, as societal irritations, and not as valuable members of society who bring their own. And it's unfortunate. And I want to challenge people to fight that in every possible way that they can. 
to not participate in the de defense of othering, to not buy in to these narratives that try to frame entire groups of people around single bad actions without context. We have to resist that because if we don't if we don't find a way to change the way that people think about about atypical people in general, our society is only going to keep getting worse. And it does affect us eventually. Just so you all know, it will affect you eventually. Every single person who is watching right now, yes, you, are eventually going to get sick. You're eventually going to get old. You might get really sick. No one leaves life fully abled. No one. And so why do we should see every single person in our society um, should be seen as a valuable member regardless of whether they're able or not. We should see people as valuable. We should take care of people because we will inevitably find ourselves in that position and a world in which we don't take care of people who aren't perfectly capable of churning out capital all the time, every day, all the time. If we believe that those people can be written off, we end up in a society that is terrible for all of us. It's a miserable, fraught society that lives in fear until eventually it happens to you. And that's the real takeaway here. The real takeaway is that this whole entire thing is a massive tragedy that we should all learn from, that we should fight against. And I mean actively. We should fight against uh, this lol cow shit. We should fight against um, people being victimized. We should try to find ways to protect people. Isn't this one of the main arguments against capitalism? Interesting. Yeah, interesting how that works. And keep in mind, again, lest anyone misunderstands what I'm saying here, people argue on the internet. People roast each other on the internet. People dunk on each other on the internet. But that is not even close to the same thing as what happened here. What has happened here is that there are groups of people whose only purpose is to stalk and harass. They might even turn people into pseudo-public figures in the name of torturing them for their entertainment. And we should oppose that so hard. We should oppose that so hard. Yeah, cringe culture is no good, folks. It's no good. And we all like to cringe. I mean, we watched we've watched the the uh we've watched this the ContraPoints cringe video. We really have. We've talked about the ContraPoints cringe video. Lone Cat says it sucks that even feudalism allows for autistic and neurodivergent people to thrive even a little, if more than in capitalism, at least from what I've heard back in the day. Well, it's funny because back in the day, there's like a term that sounds very terrible. And I apologize. This is a terrible term. But the idea of the village idiot, has anybody heard that term? It's a terrible ableist term, but it speaks to something that used to exist, which is that if somebody was disabled, the village would take care of them. They would become the property of the community. Not the property. They would become the responsibility. That's a wrong word, not property. I meant to say responsibility. Please forgive me. It's just a small misspeak. Just a small misspeak. They would become the responsibility of the community. But we don't have anything like that anymore. People, the cracks have gotten bigger. The cracks have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And people just keep falling through. So, make it your mission to fight back against this shit. I mean, to resist it. Nobody can fight back perfect. Nobody can solve the problem. But together, we can resist it. 